At this point, I have my icon working, as I see there. Now I want a new splash screen. Instead of the default Cordova logo, I want to use that logo of the college. So uh, I provided for you also in that um, icons and splash screen, I provided for you our starting point. That's already set up to the highest quality splash screen. My handout here shows on the second section, adding app splash screens, create 24-bit ping files without transparency in the following dimensions. The one that I'm giving you there is already 1280 by 1920. Now this is assuming portrait orientation. If you want landscape orientation, you just flip the values around, which is 1920 by 1280. But I'm already giving you a portrait-oriented splash screen at the highest quality, the XXX HDPI. So that one's already ready, but I want to open it in, in Photoshop, and then I want to resize it to the other sizes. And then unfortunately, um, it, the proportions are not the same for the different sizes of the screen. So if, if I take that 1280 by 1920 and shrink it down to 1440, it will not be 960 for some reason we'll have to crop it a little bit. It's kind of odd. That's why I want to do this together. But if you know a little bit about Photoshop and such, you probably can figure it out. In any event, I want to open that file in Photoshop. If I go back to Photoshop, I still have my 512 sized icon. I'm going to close it. If it asks you to save, don't click save. You don't need to. We, don't, we didn't edit anything there. If you did change it, don't worry. I have the copy in the network folder. But anyway, in Photoshop, open the splash screen. So we're going to see that before our app loads. Let's go to File, Save for Web. This one's already set to the proper dimensions, 1280 by 1920, but I want to turn off transparency at the top here. Ours doesn't actually have any transparency, so there's no problem. But if you did have transparency, what would happen is the splash screen would load up and any part that is transparent would show through and show your app. So maybe between some of these letters and such, it's going to show your app, your home screen. So your home screen is going to be peeking through the transparent parts of your splash screen. That's why you don't want a transparent splash screen. It's 24-bit ping. It remembered that. Good. Turn off transparency. This is the right dimensions already for the highest quality, so all you need to do is click the, the Save button. And then it remembered the right folder, the Android folder in the Res folder in your project folder. Save it here. These names can be anything we want, but I've already got a starting point name here, Splash 1920. So that's fine. This is the highest quality Splash, screen, splash 1920. Just save it. Now, don't do this, but then what would be logical would be to go to File, Save for Web again, and then change it to the next dimension, which my sheet shows that, okay, that's 960. And this, in this case, it did keep it in proportion of, nine, of 1440, but it won't always work. When we get down to 720, I think it won't work at that point, but uh, I guess it did work here. So let's do this. We're back here on our splash screen. Let's go back to File, Save for Web. No transparency. Change the width to 960. Our height becomes should become 1440. Let's save that. I'm saving it in that same Android screen, or the Android folder, but the Splash, now this one's called Splash 1440. I'm, I'm using the, 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 the height instead of the width. doesn't matter, but I'm choosing the height to tell me that it's a tall image. If it was a wide image, uh, I would use the width. Let's save that one. Okay, and this is what I mean here. If I go back there again, and this time do 720, then it says, okay, great, we're going to save at 720 by 1080. 
my notes here say it should be 720 by 1280. It's missing 200 pixels. Well, one thing that we could do is turn off this check mark or this little chain and then force it to be 1280. But the problem there then it's going to stretch it. Do you see my, my words suddenly stretched upward? So here's our conundrum. Some of these screens are not in proportion with each other. So I'm not going to do the safer way. I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to do instead image menu, image size. Image menu, image size. And at the top it says, what pixel dimensions would you like? I'm going to type 720 here. Again, it's going to go down to 1080. I'm missing 200 pixels. That's okay. I'm going to add them on the next step. So in this step, I'm just shrinking down to as close as possible. I'm missing 200 pixels. So 720 by 1080. Click OK. And then we'll go to Image, Canvas Size. Canvas Size will allow us to add the missing pixels. Uh, this is in inches, so change that to pixels. 720, and then change that to 1280. This is not going to stretch it. It's going to add 100 pixels on the top and 100 pixels at the bottom. That's what this means. Starting from the center, add more outward. So if I change the height there to 1280, like my notes say, 1280, it's going to add equally 100 pixels top and bottom. 720 by 1280, click OK. It added those extra pixels there. No, more, no stretching. Now I'll do Save for Web to confirm I've got the Ping 24, no transparency. Save it to the folder as Splash, uh, splash 1280, the height. So back to Save for Web. I'm confirming everything looks good, dimensions are good. Save as file splash 1280. I'm going to do the same sort of couple steps again. I'm going to go to image size first. Safer web isn't going to quite work for us at this point. So go back to image, image size. My next lower dimension is 480. Okay, if I select 480, now I've got too many pixels. It takes it up to 853. I've got 53 extra pixels. Well, once I click OK here and go back to canvas size, I can cut out those pixels. So image size, change that to 480. Yes, its height is wrong, but we'll fix it next. So click OK. Image canvas size. Uh, goes back to inches, put it on pixels. Keep that 480, and now height is 800. And what it's going to do, it's going to remove. You see it's going to shrink down, it's going to remove, not shrink, but it's going to crop 53 pixels. You know, 21 and a half at the top and 21 and a half at the bottom. Click OK and it'll warn you, you're about to crop pixels. Are you sure? Yes, proceed. Save for web again. Ping 24, no transparency, and 480. And I'm saving that one as splash 800. You might get the idea what's next, but I'll do it. 
Next comes the MDPI size, so image menu, image size. We want 320 by 480, and here again, too many pixels, so I'll crop them next. So width of 320. Image canvas size. For my pixels, I only need 480. It'll warn you you're going to clip it or crop it. That's fine. It's just cropping the white area. And now we've got a size of 320 by 480. And try to do the last one on your own now that we've done it a few times together. create those splash sizes. Eventually you should have six sizes like I've got there, one for the different sizes of screens. And we'll add the code and then test it and it should work. All right, so at this point we should have then the six sizes of the of the splash screens. And if we go back to the handout, then we need to write a little bit of code. In the handout, I'm saying that we're going to go back to our config file. And again, inside of the Android-specific properties, we're going to add this. So we'll write it once together, and then uh, we'll copy and paste it. So back to Notepad. Here's my current code. This is for the icon. It seemed to work for everyone. So next line, I'm going to start the, the tag again, like that. And this time it's going to be a tag called splash. You can actually copy that and paste it, but why not this way? Splash src equals quotes, density equals quotes. So uh, notice. It's the splash tag. We're going to need to write the source path to your splash screens. And then what particular density? The same order, L to triple H. <coughs> so we've got inside of the source, we've got res slash android 
slash uh, splash. We'll start with the smallest one, splash320 dot ping. And the density is LDPI. And so, so then you're going to copy that five more times and do the same sort of idea where you're adding the next higher size and the next the density and the next one and the next one and the next one. So do those five, and then we have two extra lines for it to fully work. I'm going to copy that whole line and paste it in totals, have it in total six times, and then I'm going to go in 320, 480, 800, 1280, 1440, and 1920, and then LDPI, MDPI, HDPI, XHDPI, XXX, HDPI, XXX, HDPI. So I'm doing this in the in the plat in the in the basic project folder, and yes, it's annoying. Once it's all done, well, then now here's our starting point for future apps. All we need to do is create new graphics. Those new graphics, if we use that ex these exact names, we don't even have to edit our code. We just drop the new graphics into the right folder of the project, and it overrides the old graphics. After we say these are the graphics, we need two more lines. So continuing along with my Instructions here, number 3.7, we need to write then the preference tag. So preference. The preference tag, it has a name equals something and a value equals something. So there's a preference here that's going to deal with two preferences that are going to deal with splash screens. So that's preference, the name Splash Screen, capital S, Splash Screen, both of those are capital S's. We're dealing with the Splash Screen preference, and from the documentation that I read, this is just one of those lines that it has to be this. Uh, you, it doesn't seem that you can change this one. This line has to be this. It's just something built into Android that we have to adhere to through Cordova. The next line we can change, we can customize. It's going to be another preference. With another name, another value. Actually the same name, we're still dealing with the splash screen. But specifically the splash screen delay. How long will we see the splash screen? And the value is in milliseconds. I'm going to do overkill here, and I'm going to say display the splash screen for 10,000 milliseconds, which is 10 seconds. On my instructions in a moment, then, I'm going to curtail that a bit. But for the moment, I want to save and test it. I want to see, does my brand new shiny splash screen load up? And it's going to load up, if this works, it's going to load up for 10 whole seconds. We're going to then fix it so that it's only loading for as long as it needs. So I'm going to save that. First I'm going to run it on my emulator so you can see it here. And then I'll run it on my real device. But let's see if it worked.
Okay, launching, there it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a half. Ten. Ten seconds. Just like we told it there. Obviously, that took way too long. No one's going to wait ten seconds to see a splash screen. So, with a little bit more code, we're going to use the on device ready event. That's the event that the that the app fires when it tells the environment that Cordova is ready. All of the ability of Cordova is ready. At that point, then let's cut the splash screen because we don't need to kind of you know pause. We don't have to artificially pause the user anymore. So that splash screen serves that part of purpose, to show some branding, but to have them wait until Cordova code is ready, until the, uh, until the event, uh, until the device ready event. Um, so on my handout, save all your files, run Cordova, notice you get a splash screen of 10 seconds. That's unrealistic. Next what we're going to do is we're going to edit the, the JavaScript. That's again my mistake. I'm going to edit this. But number six says, let's edit your JavaScript file, not the CSS file, <coughs> the JavaScript. And on the on device ready function, we're going to add navigator.splashscreen.hide. So that means when the device is ready, hide the splash screen, even if we've still got seven <coughs> seconds left. We're using the basic app, so it's a little bit different from my instructions here. This applies more for when you actually, when we finally have the, the Cordova, I mean, the, the my STCE project. So for our particular uh, project, um, it's going to be, let's see, back on the, it's in the basic project, in the WW folder, in the JavaScript folder. Let's edit the index.js file inside of the JavaScript folder, inside of the WW folder of the basic project. So that's inside of basic, inside www, inside js. So let's edit index.js. I mentioned this previously. This is the this is the uh, the JavaScript code that basically confirms that everything is ready, that all of the APIs are available, the camera, geolocation, etc. Specifically between lines 39 and 49. It's going to check, um, is it loading? Has it loaded? Great, it all loaded. And then eventually we get an output, console log received, device device ready, basically. So we have an empty line here actually that we'll borrow. We'll borrow line 46. This assumes that everything worked. If it did work, then we'll cut the the time short of the splash screen right there line 46. So I'm going to tab that right there and we'll write navigator dot splash screen dot hide open close parentheses. So we've got the object of the navigator, the web browser, the whole app, specifically the object of the splash screen and then its method hide it. Hide the splash screen. We will hide the splash screen when the whole app internal code has loaded once device ready has fired. So now if we save it and we emulate it or run it, I'm going to count along and we'll see how shorter that is this time.
right, here we go. One, two, nope, there it is. So it only needed one and a half, it only needed two seconds to load the, the API. So I'm going to load it on my real device. I'm going to count along there also. So we've got a splash screen that uh, that is that could be visible theoretically for 10 seconds, but we only needed it for the amount of time until Cordova is ready. I'm just curious also to see how fast it opens up on my real device. One, two, again. In, in one second and the device is ready, all the APIs are ready, I could take photos, I could do geolocation, local storage, all of that. We've got a little splash screen. On older devices, this is, a, this is much better because on an older device, maybe it's less powered, older CPU and such, and therefore it takes a little longer for the app internally to be ready. So then that splash screen is lasts a little bit longer until no longer necessary and then it's hidden. So I think at this point we have all of the things that I that we need set up for our basic project. This project that you should have on your F drive, I'll put it in the network folder of course, but really at, at a certain point like now, you should be working on your own project. You can always confirm your code with my code, but to start over and over with my code, uh, you might not want to do that. But anyway, on your flash drive, on my flash drive, I've got my apps folder, and I've got the basic project. This is my template, which I will use for future projects. All my basic code is here. We're going to take one short break this time. When we come back, we're going to make a copy of basic, call it my SDCE, and that's going to be finally our project that we're going to end up with at the end of this course, which is the my SDCE unofficial uh, app for this college, the one we'd worked on last month. And we will be looking at sheet 7 to get that to work. So we'll take a 7 minute break just until 8.20 and when we come back we will do this duplicate and then we will uh, create the, the, new, the new project.